Hello everyone and welcome to this uh, live presentation from Axel Tech. I'm Marco Branzanti, I'm CTO in the company and today we're going to talk about our channel in the box product which is called XTV Suite. Uh, I want to just uh, remember uh, that uh, if you want to make some questions that's that we can answer live, you can use the bell icon on the upper right corner of your YouTube page if you're following us from YouTube. If you're on Facebook, just use the Facebook chat. So XTV is uh, one of our uh, best seller products. It's a channel in the box. Essentially, what does that mean? It's a TV automation, so it means that with one keyboard, one mouse, and one or two screens, uh, from the same server, you are actually able to control and manage all the features of the TV automation. First of all, it runs on Windows. So here I have a Windows 10, but I can also run on a Windows Server 2019. Uh, you need a broadcast video card. In this case, I have a Blackmagic card inside. We support different manufacturers like uh, Aja, Bluefish, uh, DeckTech, Magwell, and others as well. Probably um, Blackmagic is the best uh, card uh, um, for uh, quality and price ratio. In this case, I have a DeckLink Duo. The DeckLink Duo 2 is a card which supports up to uh, 3G HD, and it has four channels built on, on board. And we use the four channels actually for, uh, let's say, all the services and features of the automation. Of course, one channel will be used as a master output for a program output, uh, maybe another channel for ingest, another channel maybe for live pass-through, and another channel for quality control. You can customize your services and softwares according to your needs. Um, XTV is a suite of softwares. Actually, it's 13 up different applications. Uh, the most important ones are probably the Playout, the Ingest, the CG Composer, the Trimmer, and the Scheduler. We'll go into detail with these. The other ones are more like accessories that allow you to manage uh, routing switchers better, uh, media cache copying, a logs viewer, and other. So let's start from our main application, which is the Playout. The Playout is actually a full screen GUI. We like this, it's an environment. You'll probably keep this open 24 seven just to watch your playlist run and, and uh, uh, to monitor and survey, survey your system continuously. Um, if you have a dual uh, monitor system, you can run all the other applications on the second monitor, which is of course kind of handy. Let's start right away. I'll show you how easy it is to make a playlist. Just click on the Browse button. This is a file browser. I have some local um, trailers. Uh, there are video clips with trailers. I'm just going to press the Play button, and I'm on air. So some, a few words according to the, um, as far as the formats of the video files are concerned. Uh, if you download our latest version of XTV, there's a demo you can download from our website, and you'll already get the latest FFFM, FFmpeg libraries built in. Uh, these libraries are the same libraries which are used by VLC. VLC is a famous uh, video player, which is famous because it actually can play out any type a file is very let's say codec agnostic right so we use the same engine so this means that you can virtually play any file format on your on your playlist and mixed you can mix them so you can have an mpeg1 an mpeg2 an mpeg4 which can be h264 or h265 for example we also have compatibility with the latest codec from the big guys, Google, you know, Facebook, which is called AV1. Very nice codec, very efficient, so very small file and very high quality, uh, interesting. But not only, let's say, the more popular formats, but we also support the more broadcast formats, like the hard ones. Uh, starting with ProRes, uh, for the you know, lovers of the Mac world, and then we have AVD DNX HD, we have Grass Valley files, we have XDCAM from Sony, and others, and we manage all those types of file formats directly inside your playlist.
Uh, also, the audio codecs, of course, from AAC to MP3 to FLAC to uh, uncompressed audio. This is all completely automatic. The system actually decodes them in real time and renders them out to your output. Not only this, we have complete flexibility as far as format resolution is concerned. So if you tell your system that you want to go out in HD and you put a 4K file on top or an SD file on your playlist, it'll automatically be upscaled and downscaled according to your output format. And you also have the possibility to tell the system to respect the aspect ratio. So you have automatic aspect ratio correction, which is quite nice. Where do you tell your system in which format, which native format you want to go out? in the system settings and here we have them and as you see we support SD resolution, HD resolution, also up to progressive so up to 3G and then we have 2K, 4K up to uh, also higher uh, frame rates but we also have 8K built inside. So actually if you put the right type of card inside, inside your system you can go up to these high resolution formats and a good card to start experimenting your 8K is the Blackmagic Decklink 8K Pro which is a really nice card because you can do one channel of 8K over the four 12G connectors or you can also configure the card to actually be a four channel 4K card and it's just a little more expensive the Blackmagic Duo and it's quite nice because it's a quite new card and it gives you 4K possibilities altogether. Of course it runs also in a minor resolution in HD and so forth. Another interesting thing about our playout is we manage all the 16 audio channels which are built into the SDI. So if you choose to play out in stereo because you don't need extra audio channels, when you put a file which has multiple audio channels inside like a movie which has been captured in 5 plus 1 or 7 plus 1 audio, the, the play out will actually down mix your audio channels automatically so you don't lose any audio channels. Or you can use a special configuration with special files in order to manage your, for example, multi-language play out. So this is, this is up to you. So going back to our playout, of course the playlist is dynamic. You can change the content of the playlist uh, while you are running. You never need to interrupt your playout. And um, what else can we do on the playlist? Well, something interesting is uh, implementation we've done recently, which is the possibility to go to your favorite YouTube channel. Let's go to YouTube. Here it is. I'm just going to go to the first clip I find over here. I'm getting the URL of the clip and then I'm inserting into the playlist that URL. We just implemented a new uh, DLL in the system which allows you to play not only from YouTube but for several hundreds of other uh, websites so it's kind of a let's say um, advanced parsing and uh, media retrieval the right URL it goes inside the URL and finds actually the link to the video file so let me play that out for you so right now what I'm doing is I'm actually streaming directly from the internet uh, decoding here I am and this is the file which is actually coming from YouTube and I'm playing it out over the over the over the SDI so of course you can do this you need a good connection reliable connection why if by any chance the connection goes down the player recognizes that it has a freeze and no more frames are coming in so we'll interrupt the play out and skip to the next event so it's it's advisable to do this only if you have a, a good connection. Let's talk about what type of IP uh, streaming formats you can use. Well, you've seen a YouTube link, which is an HTTPS, but usually you can put any type of streaming, uh, like RTMP, which is very popular, UDP, RTSP, and many others. Usually, I always say, if VLC can, can view it, we can put it on here because we're actually using the same multimedia libraries. 
Another interesting format which we support, which was lately added, is SRT. SRT is quite becoming quite popular simply because it goes well over internet connections like RTMP, but unlike RTMP, it also supports H.265. So people are starting to use this codec because it's more efficient than H.264. And uh, also because it can be uh, configured to have a very low latency. So it has better performance rather, uh, rather than RTMP. RTMP is not dead, even if uh, double flash technologies were sent an end of life lately and stopped working worldwide. But it's still used, for example, to stream up to YouTube and RTMP and, and Facebook. Actually, this live show is done with an X ingest, we'll see that later, which is actually encoding the SDI uh, from the cameras, from the video mixer, uh, directly to the uh, YouTube and Facebook uh, uh, servers. And the format we are using is RTMP. Very good. So what else can you put on the playlist? Well, one of the most important things are live events. So I can put a live event directly on the playlist. I can decide the duration and I can select between my inputs. And here we have to stop for a moment. Why? There are two basic ways to insert live events, which are not IP streaming, we've already seen that, onto the uh, the playlist. Usually what you would like want to put on there, I don't, I don't know, is a live event coming from a satellite or from a studio in, with an SDI cable and so forth. So the two ways of doing this, there's a traditional way and a, let's say more modern way to do it. So traditionally speaking, the automation will actually take control and send commands to external devices. These external devices are routing switchers, routing switchers, or master control device or video mixer which have audio follow video capabilities and so you would connect your live inputs directly to the routing switcher and then simply the playout will send the right command and, and, and the physical switching will be done by the routing switcher. So how is this done? There's a specific section into the playout where you can specify a Blackmagic Video Hub switcher, a Blackmagic ATEM video mixer like a master control, uh, a TriCaster which also can you be used as a master control or this is new, also a VMix. V -mix is something like a, a video mixer, a software video mixer which runs on Windows. So you can feed your uh, live sources directly to vMix and we can send commands to vMix and treat it as it were uh, a master control. Or any serial uh, any routing switcher or device which has a serial port, so RS-232 or RS-422, you can actually customize the syntax and communicate with that device directly. And that's the traditional way of doing it. The more modern approach is to actually connect uh, your uh, the SDI video signal coming from your uh, studio, for example, directly to the onboard video card. So in that case, into the live section, you tell that your line one, my first uh, um, live source, is coming actually from an audio video input device. And, and the system will allow you to choose the card, the channel of the card, and configure that in order to be used by um, the, the software. In the same section, as you see, I can also use an NDI receiver. We haven't talked about NDI yet. NDI is um, a video over IP format, low latency, high quality, which runs into your LAN environment. It's a new tech, uh, let's say, technology. And so if you have a TriCaster or any NDI device which is on your network, you, you can feed that directly into the live input section of the playout and then insert it into your, uh, your playlist and mix live IP and files all together. Um, uh, Okay, I have a question here from Abdu. Hello, Abdu. How do you put stop set in the scheduler? Uh, how do I do that? Well, I think uh, if I interpret it, uh, let's say correctly, uh, what we have is an automatic stop, which I have over here. So both into the playout and into the scheduler and into the trimmer, you can set that parameter, the automatic stop on any clip, uh, 
And what will happen is the following. If I press a play button, the system will go in automatic mode. What does automatic mean? That the, the, actually the playlist will play from start to the beginning. If I put it in manual, the playlist will stop at the current event. So if I set an automatic stop parameter on any clip, which I can set from the keyboard, I have a shortcut, which is my shortcut is the V. So the V parameter in, uh, with the shortcut actually sets this parameter directly from the playout grid. What happens is the playout will stop. But if that event is a live event, since a live event does not have actually an end, so it doesn't have a physical mark out like a file does, what the system will do is actually continue to play that live event until the user doesn't press the skip button to skip to the next event. And that's how we, 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 we manage live events. So we have, we put the live event onto the playlist between our commercials. We put the V parameter, which is the automatic stop. So for, at the end of the commercial, the live event goes on air and it will continue to air until the operator actually presses the skip button. So, uh, on to the next features, uh, there's a, a CG built inside, so what does this mean? That I can actually superimpose CG graphics, uh, advanced CG graphics, directly onto the, onto the video. Usually it's used for logo generation, but also to put here, in this case, I have some news, some weather announcements, traffic reports, etc. And how do you create this? And this is one of the major add-ons of our system. We give you a tool which is called the CG Composer, which is actually... Uh, free of charge, so this means that you can play, you can install it on any computer on your uh, graphic guy's uh, computer, and you can use this to actually compose your pages with infinite layers, and you can put clocks and dates and crawls and tickers and animations and picture in picture, and you can create your uh, CG templates, which later you can use onto your playout. And this is actually the GUI, the graphical GUI is a great add-on to, um, to the automation. The interesting thing is that once you've created the template, it's uh, in, uh, resolution independent. So this means that you can create your template in SD and use it in HD or in 4K and the system will automatically upscale and downscale your content. Of course, graphical content must be of good quality if you want to use upscaling. Let's say, let's see another question from Omar. Hello, Omar, how are you? Will the playlist stop if tomorrow many files were played and it will not it was not cleared okay so I think you refer to uh, memory management so there is a limit on how much how, how long how big a playlist you can actually fit on top of the playout I think it's something like uh, uh, 16,000 files or something like that uh, the system has some special automatism and if he sees that he's running low on memory he will actually automatically clear the played files the aired files so this is uh, automatic and built inside of course a normal workflow would be that let's say that i have a long weekend three or four uh, days ahead what I do is I load the three or four days of playlists and then when I come back after the weekend I just look at the played events since everything went well and just do a check and then I have a special um, a special um, button here which is called clear aired and what the system is will do I will show you why I'm on air what the system will do is simply clear the old events in order to free up memory uh, for that usually for the user he doesn't even notice the difference if you just continue and adding and adding the playlist then the old events will be automatically deleted uh, I have Cheyenne and Arafo TV. Hello, guys. Can you show us how to schedule a playlist or a certain date on the calendar? Can you set a playlist to repeat weekly or monthly? Okay, let's say uh, first of all 
you can do this both on the playlist or onto the scheduler. We'll see the scheduler, how it works. So I have what is called an exact time management. So without this button, the playlist is just a stupid playlist. You press play. When it starts, it starts. When it finishes, it finishes. If you want the system to keep track of time, you need to tell the system to manage the exact time. And then for each event, what I can do is I can tell the system actually at what time I want to play. It. So let's say, say I want to play it in three minutes, so I'm going to put 23, I have the exact time button on, and what the system will do, uh, exact weight, uh, oh, AM, sorry, uh, PM, I need to put PM here, uh, okay, I, AM and PM, okay, let's see like this, uh, 323, today is the 12th. Not sure what's happening. Anyway, the, 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 I think I have to do some settings. Anyway, what you do is you put the exact date and time that you want uh, on your system, and you tell the system to manage the exact time. And then what the system will do is will, it will actually start at that specific time. And if the, if you're in stop mode, this is what happens. If you're in play. What happens is you can adjust an exact time on any um, event which comes after that and then what you do is you, the system will actually jump to that time when the right time comes up. And you can choose three ways of uh, exact time management. One is wait. So the system will jump to that event, waiting for the current event to finish. Or you can cut the event, which means that exactly that time, whatever is on there, will be cut and he will jump to the event. Or the split. What is the split? Well, of course, it will cut the event and the remaining segment of that event will be played after the exact time event. So exact time management needs a little practice, of course. But once you set it up correctly, it, it actually works very well. Let's go to the second part can you set a playlist to repeat weekly or monthly I have to say you cannot the playlist is, is top-down so it plays from top to bottom so you would have to repeat your playlist uh, let's say uh, weekly or monthly in order to do that so since the time span is very long there's also another way of doing it so you can actually create a folder structure and in the folder structure, the folders must have a date uh, syntax, and you can see it in the settings here. So I'll just read them for you. Let's say I have them here. So the sixth has to be, be the root of the folder, and then year, 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 month, month, day, day, and then a subfolder with inside a playlist with hour, hour, and minutes, minutes. And that's how you create an automation in order for the system to load automatically your playlists. So in this case, if I wanted to do a weekly or a monthly playlist, I would do my playlist, and then simply I would copy and paste the folder correctly of course in order for the system to load the playlist at certain times and certain dates in order to replicate uh, that type of uh, let's say uh, for workflow so that's what probably I would suggest okay so apart from the CG layer I'll go on we also have a very nice a DVE built inside and what the DVE uh, allows you to do is like a picture-in-picture -picture effect which we call a squeeze back and so on the back of the picture-in-picture -picture effect what we have is another additional layer of graphics so I can change the metadata and this is called the dynamic text so live from Excel tech and if I go back in and go back out as you see the text will be actually replaced and it will go directly on air these CG events can be managed as secondary events. That's what we call them. Uh, what does this mean? You can associate CG uh, templates to specific clips, to specific timing inside the clips, and let the system automatically manage that for you. How do you do? We have a special button. So the big buttons in the GUI, what they actually do is they add features and smart features to your playlist. So in this case, 
I press the auto CG button, and as you see on air, I have an event called Maggie, and in the parameter column, I have a G, which means graphics. So if I take the manual graphics off, what these logos that you see on top are actually associated as secondary events directly for on the Maggie clip. Where do I see that? I go into edit clip, I do into go into the second page, and as you see, some graphics were associated to the Maggie clip, and that's why it's playing. If I press the skip button, oh sorry, if I press the skip button or I wait for the clip to finish, as you see, the CG will go off air by itself because the clip on air in that moment does not have, have any CG associated. So that's kind of a brief demo on how the secondary events for CG actually work. Going on, I want to talk to you about the output possibility. So interesting is the uh, simultaneously I can output to SDI and we've seen that before using the deck link but I can also simultaneously go out in NDI and in WebRTC so three simultaneous output at the same time and then I have a dedicated section for my IP outputs so as far as IP outputs are concerned I have two IP outputs which I can configure the interesting thing I can do some sort of video format conversions and audio format conversions. Why? Maybe you are playing out in SDI and you want to go to your YouTube uh, channel and in your YouTube channel you don't want to use HD. Maybe you want to downscale to half HD which is 1280 times 720 which is more in the let's say YouTube format and maybe you want to do some frame rate conversion you know that YouTube does not like interlaced so what you want to do is maybe use some uh, progressive formats in order to better let's say give a, the, the signal which is more for IP web uh, purposes rather than than um, a video and then you can choose the format. Of course, YouTube, Facebook use RTMP. We have a lot of formats like UDP streaming or DVB compatible streaming. This is to go directly to your multiplexer. Also, interesting feature, you, you avoid purchasing a, a hardware encoder and you go directly into the MUX. And then we have SRT also in output. So interesting, I've talked to you about SRT in, 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 as an IP source. We can also stream as an SRT output, which is interesting. And older formats. We also have Apple HTTP live streaming. A lot of people refer to this as HLS. So we support HLS directly. HLS is actually a file format rather than a streaming format. So that you define a folder, the system will actually put all the files necessary into the folder. There are transports for stream file, TS files, but also the M3 U8 playlist file. Then what you will do is you will install a web server of some a sort and let's say share the folder or the content of the folder to the internet and then with the right link connection and web link connection you connect to the M3U8 and what you get is a real HLS. I have several requests coming in why you know RTMP and Adobe Flash went in end of life so people are migrating their way they actually uh, transport their video, audio and video channels and there are many providers which are now asking for HL, HLS rather than RTMP. So this is also built inside. And of course, as I said, we have two outputs on that. Uh, can the squeeze back be automated for programs coming out without associating to a file in a playlist? Let's say uh, not really, in the sense that what we can do is we can associate graphics directly to genders of files. So what you can say here in the character generator, what you can say every type I have a documentary put on air my next, uh, let's say, next file uh, are coming up next. So according to the gender of the file, you can associate, uh, rather than the simple file as you're asking, you can associate uh, a CG template. And the CG template can be a, 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 an overlay CG, but it can be um, uh, um, <clears throat> a squeeze back. Let me find a squeeze back here, squeeze back. Okay, so the squeeze back can be a now playing or a coming back in, in some time or an up next. There is no automatic workflow as far as 
up next uh, uh, programs is concerned. We are thinking about it. Probably it's in our roadmap. And so what you will do is we will select the genders which are eligible for up next. I don't want to do an up next on my commercials. I just want to do it on my, on my let's say, main program. And then you can program that uh, specific template wherever you want on your playlist. So it's in a roadmap. In the roadmap, we have a specific uh, CG management for up next events, but not only coming back in uh, in a while or during the commercial and uh, and the, the name of the current file, which is actually on here. Okay, so that's coming. Will come up in a brief uh, brief time. Let's say it's already in the road roadmap. So let me briefly, since uh, time flies. Um, go to the other applications that we have in our suite. So we've seen the play out. I'm going to briefly show you the ingest. Ingest is quite simple, but uh, now very complete. We've inserted a lot of features inside lately. First of thing you can, you can capture from SDI, from NDI, but also from URL. So you can capture directly from an IP stream to your disk and then play it out afterwards in your playout. That's kind of cool. Um, we've inserted some specific, uh, let's say, automations inside in order to get a 24-7 recording out of your X ingest as if it was a, a logging software. So this means they can run forever, 24-7, split your files at the hour, have a specific syntax, a file naming syntax in order to keep your files nice and orderly. And why would we do this? Well, the first thing is uh, X-Ingest is very flexible, but mostly it can uh, perform high quality recordings using for example, your GPU, and that's kind of interesting. So I want to show you, if you go into your uh, uh, MPEG-4, in an MPEG-4 format like this one over here, this is QuickTime, but it's the same, what I can do is I can choose NVIDIA codecs, which are built inside my NVIDIA card, and I can capture an H.264 and H.265. So this feature allowed us to build up multiple channel system and I have something like eight X ingest instances capturing at the same time in HD format, in H.264 and with a single server, a single computer and I'm capturing these, uh, the, these videos for 24-7 in order to keep these high quality recordings and this is mostly for re-editing purposes. So this is what we've done lately with uh, uh, X ingest. So the file formats we can capture are very, very uh, many. Uh, just a few are already in our built-in profiles, and I'll go through them. Apple ProRes, AVC Intra, DNX HD, uh, several favors of DV. I have a Grass Valley, Matroska, QuickTime, MPEG-1, MPEG-2, Windows Media Video, XDCAM, and so forth. And we have many more as well. And you can configure some profiles yourself built inside. So as you see, it's a very flexible. While you are capturing, what you can do is you also can stream output. So you can use the X ingest actually as an encoder as well as a, as a, a file capture application. And also here we have the same exact formats well, that we have in X playout, which are RTMP, UDP, SRT, and so forth. Uh, we have an internal scheduler, this is quite handy, so you can schedule your recordings automatically and we can send commands to routing switchers or video mixers in order to select your video source. So from 2 to 3 o'clock tonight I want to capture from source number 1 of my router and then from 3 to 4 from source number 4 the system will take care of sending the commands to the router in order to, to do the proper scheduling. So as you see, a quite nice uh, and complete tool just for ingest, which is part of the XTV suite. Usually an XTV suite is a single license, and the XTV suite license includes one channel for playout, one channel for ingest, and the rest of the applications are free, so you can install install it on any PC. I have another question here. Hi Mike, how are you? How can I configure a backup playout? Well, redundancy is built into the system. I'll do the simplest one, which is called one plus one, uh, mirror backup, uh, mirror, yeah, mirror backup, or as we call it, master and slave. 
So one system will be your master, and it will be the system which you will use on air. And a second system, which is connected via, via LAN, uh, what, uh, on the network, what you will do is you will simply tell him, I am the slave, and you will put the, ma the IP of your master um, master play out. So what happens is, whatever you do on your master, the slave will follow. Okay, so if you do a playlist, load a playlist, bam, you get it on your slave. If you press a skip button, it also will skip. So the slave always follows the master and checks how the, the alignment is not perfect because it's not a hardware link. It's just the software which is following the other software. So you kind of get one, two, or three frames of difference on the output. Whenever, and it's this is a configuration of the parameters, whenever the difference is higher than three frames, what the slave will do, it will realign automatically exactly to do what the master is doing. Then usually what you get, what you install is a, uh, a hardware changeover. Okay, so it's a device which has master input, slave input, and one output. And what it does, it detects anomalies on the master playout. So no video, freeze, no audio, etc. Usually it's hardware based, it's a changeover, hardware changeover, but it can also be made via software, let's say. We do it with our logging software as well, this type of work. Whenever the anomaly is detected, what the changeover will do is it will actually switch. Uh, to the output of the slave, and then send the GPI command to the slave, informing that he's not, no, no longer the slave, he's on air, so it starts following the master. This is done automatically, usually. The, the opposite is done manually. So if you want to pass from your slave device to your master device once you've repaired it, or et cetera, you, the, uh, the, the vice versa operation is manual. This is the one plus one redundancy. We also have a N plus one, which means with the X emergency tool, uh, you can configure up to eight playouts and define one machine to be your uh, spare machine. And of course, it takes around maybe 10 to 15 seconds for the spare machine to load the failing playlist and play it. But of course, it's much cheaper rather than doing one plus one, since you have maybe eight playouts and only one machine as a spare. Then, just to complete the, 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 the subject, what we have is media redundancy. So what does this mean? Let's say you have all your files on your NAS, uh, on the LAN, and you can use the XMIRROR application to actually make a local copy of your media on your local hard disk. This is kind of becoming popular because people are buying NAS, maybe the NAS does not have the proper uh, performance, maybe the LAN, your network is not very good, so maybe you don't have a, a, a LAN architecture in order to allow you to stream directly from your NAS. So you're starting the XMIRROR, what the XMIRROR does is it copies the content of the media of the current playlist onto your local drive and then simply the playout recognizes that you have in the local drive and it will prefer it. Where do you have this? In the settings there's a specific, spe specific section for media paths and in the media path you can define a preferred media path. So then what the XMIRROR does also you can define how much uh, free space you want to leave on that hard disk. So not only does it copy automatically, it also deletes the oldest media which you don't need anymore from your local hard disk. So this is quite interesting. Okay, let me go on with uh, the scheduler. The scheduler is an application which allows you to uh, create your uh, schedules offline, it's free of charge. Why? We want you to install this in your office and very, very comfortably make your playlist directly from your desktop. Once you've made your playlist offline, you save it onto the NAS, onto the server, and you can use that playlist afterwards. And this is completely free also. Last component which I want to tell you about is the extremer. It's probably the most important component of the system. And I'll explain why. We say that this tool now is our quality control tool. Historically, the trimmer was made to actually take out away the tails of a capture which I made maybe from tape, so you get these tails and you want to take it off. Then it kind of evolved into a much uh, nicer product. So what can I do is I can take a movie and define my mark in my mark out, but I can also actually 
segment the movie into multiple parts, maybe to do some management for your advertisement built inside. And then, of course, I can add metadata to it, so I can put a gender and use that gender for an automatic uh, CG uh, workflow if I want. But not only, I can force a different aspect ratio, so you see I'm forcing uh, from 4 by 3 to 16 by 9 and then what can I do is also zoom in and zoom out, changing, changing the crop, taking away some letterbox and this is a feature which uh, I don't think any other playout has that. It's really cool. So you can define the quantity of, of, of letterbox that you need. One of the most interesting features is that you can set your playout volume. So the audio level, what you do is you set it before going on air to your internal reference. And, and the system will play out exactly with that audio level. We also inserted an automatic procedure for calculation of the loudness. So this means that according to ITU 1770 algorithm, which is loudness, and according to your country, the, the trimmer will propose automatically the audio level you should play this out to. And another thing you can do is you can actually associate graphics. So this is a way of setting your secondary events directly on the file. And this means that you need to do this only one time. And then he will always play it out with that specific graphics. And what you can see is the graphics is actually previewed directly inside the trimmer. By the way, the trimmer can output also on SDI. So if you have a computer in your office, you pop in a deck link mini monitor, which is just a, a couple of hundreds of dollars, and you connect your HDMI to your TV, you are able to see real-time video, full quality video with graphics and everything directly onto your television. And that's why we say it's actually a quality control uh, software, or it has become one for this feature. So what you need to do, the proper workflow is, whatever media comes into the server, first you pop it into the trimmer, do all the necessary adjustments, and then certify how it's going to go on air. And that's exactly how it's going to go on air all the time. So that's why it's so important, okay? So we're almost at the end of the program. I'm going to answer to Omar. Hi, Omar, how are you? Tell me about X Music at this time. Okay, X Music is actually an option for the system. And I have a specific feature into the playout, which is called the autofill. I'm going to talk about the autofill before. So if I press the auto, let's say that you have an exact time management. And you say a certain event is going to go on there at 5 o'clock this afternoon. But the, the playout reaches this exact time event before 5 o'clock. So normally what it's going to do, it's going to stop. And it's going to wait for 5 o'clock, so you're going to go black until 5 o'clock. But if you have the autofill button on, the system will actually fill up that black space with randomly with um, uh, files which are coming out from a specific folder. So in the settings, what you do in the miscellanea, you just define the filler folder, and then you tell if you want the fillers to go in alphabetically or randomly, etc. And that's usually a normal workflow. If you have the X music on, what you can do is X music allows you to define folders inside the folders you put some video clips you define the gender of the folder pop rock etc and then you can make a rotation of these folders as if it was a radio station it's 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 a much simpler management than let's say a radio automation software but it does achieve that goal so whenever you would have a free empty space in your playout you don't need to make a playlist what the system will do instead of auto filling it will ask the X music to give him the name of and the, uh, and the file name of a song to play according to that specific rule and rules are let's say weekly based based on clocks and so forth um, it's just an easy and fast way to make a music television, let's say, okay? 
So this is for Omar. Okay, guys, so uh, I've showed you our XTV suite. There's a lot more other details uh, which I didn't talk about, but if you're interested, please follow up with all your questions. I, uh, I want to um, tell you to write at sales at axeltechnology.com, and we'll be happy to reply. So this is our... Uh, YouTube and Facebook live event from Axel Tech. We showed you our channel in the box, which is our XTV suite, one of our best sellers for because it has really, really full of features and really easy to use. I'm Marco Branzanti, CTO of the company. Thank you to Stefano Greco, which actually organized the event. Thank you to Gianluca Righi, which are, is our director, our video director. And until next time, bye-bye, everybody, and thank you. Thank you.